Welcome back to our channel. You're doing what? A channel dedicated to people in the later decades of their life wanting to have adventure, in our case, primarily full-timing in an RV. Today, I wanna to talk to you about how you get your mail when you're on the road. So in the past, because we've traveled almost every summer in an RV, but in the past, we've had our local UPS store accept our mail through temporary forwarding and then when we arrive at um, an area, usually every two weeks, we will scope out that area and look for a small town post office to have, <clears throat> to have our mail shipped by UPS to our last name, general delivery, and that post office address. And that's worked okay for a summer, but being full time, we thought we needed a more, um, maybe professional forwarding service. So I'm gonna to talk to you about two of them. The first one is very popular among RVers. It is through Escapees RV Club. Uh, the facility is located in Livingston, Texas, and I understand they do a fabulous job. They're, they have a, a whole system set up dedicated to mail forwarding for full-time RVers. Actually, I don't even think you have to be full-time, part-time RVers too. We chose to find a place in Florida because we want to maintain our domicile in Florida. So this facility is called St. Brendan's Isle and it caters to full-time boaters and RVers. The uh, facility is in the little town of Green Cove Springs and it's a really cute little town up in Northern Florida, probably 20 or so miles from St. Augustine so it's inland. There's a great RV park here at the Clay County Fairgrounds. I don't know how many sites they have, maybe 50 or 60, but they are um, full hookups and get, uh, yeah, full hookups with sewer, water, and electricity. And it's very quiet out here. Um, just a really nice little place to stay and close enough to Jacksonville where we have relatives that we can visit while we're waiting to um, be sure everything's firmed up for the mail forwarding. <clears throat> so how it works is when you decide you're ready to go at least 10 days ahead of time, you contact the U.S. Postal Service and it's easy to do online, but you can also go into a post office and fill out a mail forwarding document. Now you can do temporary forwarding or permanent. We did permanent this time because we sold our house and we're not gonna be going back to that address. So you fill out a, a, a change of address form for the address of the mail forwarding service that you're using. So in this case, St. Brendan's Isle and their address in Green Cove Springs, Florida. And really, I, I have found probably 15 days ahead of time is better. The post office has been really slow this, this year getting things done. And maybe it's COVID, I have no idea, but give yourself a little extra time. Now, before you start sending mail to St. Brendan's Cove, you have to sign up with them, fill out an application form, pay a fee, give it your monthly fee, first monthly fee is $13.95, then um, get their address and fill out all the paperwork. You do a couple paperwork pieces for the U.S. Postal Service that have to be notarized, so this process takes a little time as well, going back and forth because you can't scan and just send the notarized copy up. You've got to actually physically send it to them. So that takes some time too. So really, I, I would say that about a month out from when you're gonna leave that you begin this process. Now we've had one package shipped to us from the facility and it was a, I mean, just easy as could be. I called, they sent, we received and we used priority mail, which is two, uh, two to three days, I think, delivery through the U.S. Postal Service, and it worked just fine. And it included a couple of packages that we had ordered, as well as a lot of letters. I don't think we had much junk mail. I, it seems like they went through the junk mail and tossed it. 
Now the other option you have for receiving your mail is to have the facility scan it and send it to you electronically. I still like to see the paper, but I can foresee more and more that scanning might be what we do most of the time, having them scan what has come in, other than packages, of course. Now, where do you send it? Um, we choose little towns in wherever we're, our next destination is, a small town around that area. So if we go to an urban area, let's say we go to Albuquerque, then we pick a little town, 10,000 people or so, maybe 7,000 people, we, we pick that post office because I have found over all these years of forwarding mail that smaller post offices tend to take better care of your mail because it's coming to general delivery with your name on it. And if you call those post offices ahead of time and say, mail is coming for me, I will be there within a week to pick it up, then I think they appreciate that because they'll watch for it. Now, if you do have mail forwarded to general delivery, they'll only keep it at a general, general delivery site post office for 30 days, and then they'll send it back to the sender. So you have to get there before that 30 days is up, but that, that's usually not a problem. And with St. Brendan's Isle, you keep an account of $100 in that account, and when the account to pay for postage. When the account drops below, I think $25, they'll recharge your credit card up to $100 to pay for those fees. Okay, it's a really simple process and um, it, it's an easy way when someone says, well, how will you get your mail? You're not gonna be able to get your mail. How will we get in touch with you? You can say, oh, I've got it covered. It's gonna be forwarded and it's not a problem. And this is what we're doing. Have a great day, and I look forward to talking to you again. Adios.